This week, Apple announced three new phones, the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. Now, one of the things that people are talking about the most is the new identification system that will replace Touch ID on the iPhone 10 model. Apple is calling it Face ID, a system that identifies you and unlocks your phone when you look at it. Sounds very simple, but how does it actually work? Well, here's how. Most of the components that Face ID utilizes are located in the top front part of the phone. In fact, Apple managed to squeeze in quite a few different things here. Besides your standard front-facing camera, a microphone, speaker, ambient light sensor, and proximity sensor, you also have an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, and a dot projector. And this is something that Apple is calling the True Depth Camera System. We're going to focus on the last three components here, as those are the ones necessary for Face ID to work. So here's what happens when you glance at your iPhone X. First off, the flood illuminator lights up your face. This is done using infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye. Once the system detects the position of your face, the dot projector kicks in. This component is reported to shoot 30,000 infrared dots on your face in order to create a unique 3D map of it. Since this is done with infrared technology, that should mean performance in low light situations, which is often pointed out as a concern, shouldn't really be a problem. The infrared camera captures the 3D pattern created by the dots, which is used to create a mathematical model of your face. That model is then checked against the one that was previously set up on the device. If it's a match, you'll be identified, the phone will unlock, and you'll be granted access to the particular action you wanted to engage in. This all happens in real time, and Apple is saying that the chances of a random person unlocking a phone are one in a million. For reference, the chances for a random person unlocking a phone with Touch ID were estimated at 1 in 50,000. Now the true backbone of the system is located in the A11 Bionic chip, which includes a 64-bit CPU with 6 cores, 2 high-performance cores called Monsoon, and 4 energy-efficient cores called Mistral but it also includes dedicated neural hardware, a neural engine as Apple calls it. It's able to perform up to 600 billion operations per second, and it's used for machine learning processes that are necessary for Face ID to work the way it was intended. And that's the interesting part, because besides remembering your face and unlocking your phone once it recognizes it, this identification system is supposed to utilize the neural engine in order to adapt and learn about changes on your face. So, in theory, it should be able to recognize you if you're wearing glasses, a hat, or if you change your hairstyle, grow a beard, etc. According to Apple, that facial recognition information is stored locally in a secure enclave on the Apple A11 Bionic chip and not on the cloud. This is reported to act as a dedicated coprocessor that has its own encrypted memory, secure boot process, and a random number generator. Of course, this is not the first time that face recognition is being implemented in a smartphone, but the iPhone X is the first phone to use the mentioned type of 3D technology and neural networks to get it done. Now, when you take something that works, like Touch ID, and replace it with hardware that hasn't really been utilized yet on smartphones, you're gonna have to deal with skepticism. The Face ID fail that we all saw during the big Apple event isn't very reassuring, but we're going to have to wait until after the release date in order to make a verdict. Even though it would have been nice if they had managed to put a fingerprint scanner somewhere on the iPhone X, in theory, Face ID sounds very nice. And for Apple's sake, it better be.